Good morning scholars, welcome back to the channel. This morning we're looking at solving algebraic equations at the grade 4 level using division and multiplication. So we're, we're being asked to find what the variable is. So for example, 9 times which number gives 18? So we're using x to represent a number which when you multiply 9 by that number you get 18. Because remember, whenever you see a number right next to a letter, we call the number the coefficient and we call them the letter the variable. Whenever you see them right beside each other, it's, it actually means they are being multiplied by each other. So 9x means 9 times x. 2y means 2 times y. Whatever y is, whatever x is, we will want to find out. What is y? What is x? What is the number which, when you multiply 2 by it, you get 12? What is the number which, when you multiply 3 by that number, you get 36? Now, in order, in order to solve these equations, we are going to do the opposite operation of the operation that's being done on the left or right, wherever the variable is, because we want to get the variable by itself, either on the right or on the left, preferably on the, the left. So in order to get the variable by itself, we need to cancel out the coefficient. In other words, we need to get rid of the 9 from beside the x. So to get rid of the 9, to cancel it out, to make it equal to 1, we have to do the opposite. So in our, we are multiplying 9 by x. The opposite of multiplication is division. We are going to divide the 9 by 9 to get rid of the 9. So we have a 1. 9, to, 9 into itself goes 1. 1x one is the same as just x. 1 to 1, just x. The catch is... If we, didn't, if we divide by 9 on the left, we have to divide by 9 on the right to balance it off so that we have not really changed the equation. We're not supposed to change the equation. So whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. The idea, remember, the idea is just to have the variable by itself because we want to know what is the variable equal to. What's the value of x? What's the value of y? So we're going to follow that strategy. We're going to divide by the coefficient, the number that's in front of the variable. But we have to do it on both sides. That's the catch. We mo whatever we do to the left, we must do to the right so that we have not changed the equation. So we're going to divide by 9 to cancel out the 9. And we have to divide this side by 9. So finally then, we just have x and 18 divided by 9 is 2. And we have solved our equation. x is 2. And if we plug back 2 into the original equation, 9 times 2 does give 18. So we can always, when we solve, we can always plug that value back in. Substitute that value back into the original equation to see if it makes sense, to see if it works. All right, so we have two times what number gives 12. We're going to divide both sides by two, and that cancels out the two. So we're left with y is equal to 12 divided by two gives six. So y is equal to, to six. To check our answer, six, two times six does give 12. So we know that we are correct. 3 times which number gives 36? So we're going to divide both sides by 3. These 3 cancel out, so we're left with P is equal to 12. 3 times 12 gives 36. 7 times X is 21. 7X equals 21. Which number, when you multiply it by 7, you get 21? So let's divide both sides by 7. 7 cancels itself out, and we're left with x is equal to 3. 10w gives 90. Which number, when you multiply by 10, you get 90. Let's divide both sides by 10. 
the tens cancel out, and we're left with W equal 9. Let's double check to see if the answer is correct. If we have 10 and we multiply it by 9, do we get 90? Is 10 times 9 90? Yes, it is. So we know that we are correct. And we're going to do this. This time they put the result on the left and the expression on the right. But it doesn't matter. We're still going to do the same principle. So we're dividing both sides by the coefficient of x. We're dividing both sides by 2. Remember, you have to do it on both sides. So the 2's cancel. 28 divided by 2 is 14. So 14 is equal to x. If you wish, you can rewrite this as x equal 14 because we prefer to have the variable on the left and the result on the right. That's the elegant way, the preferred way of writing our answer. All right, 16 is equal to 4 times what? What is y? 4 times which number would give 16? So we need to cancel out the coefficient of 4. We're going to divide by 4 on both sides. Very important, must do it on both sides to balance things off so we're not really changing anything. We're doing the same thing to both sides. These fours cancel. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So 4 is equal to y or y is equal to 4. All right, now 1 is equal to 3 times what? If we multiply 3 by something, we get 1. What can that number be? 3 times which number gives a smaller number? Well, we're going to follow the same principle. So we're going to divide by the coefficient of x, which is 3. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So these cancel out. So we're left with 1 third. And it makes sense. It has to be a fraction. It has to be a fraction which, when we multiply it by the, the 3, we get a smaller number than 3, right? So it has to be 1 third. 1 third of 3 would give 1. 2 is equal to 5 times which number? Again, we're saying 2 is smaller than 5. So if we're multiplying 5 by a number to get 2, it must be a fraction. We're going to divide by the coefficient of, five, which is of, of y, which is 5, and do the same thing on this side. The 5's cancel out, so we get a fraction as our answer, 2 fifths. y is equal to 2 fifths. Just to put it in the elegant, the preferred way, with the variable on the left. You're not wrong. You're not wrong if you leave it like this. This is just the preferred way with the y on the left and the result on the right. 24 is equal to 12 times what? 24 is bigger than 12. Okay, so we're going to divide by the coefficient of w, which is 12. We're going to make sure to remember to do the same thing on both sides. The 12s cancel, 24 divided by 12, we know our 12 times table, we know that's 2. So 2 is equal to W, or W is equal to 2. And we can always plug it back in and check. 12 yes. times 2, do we get 24? Yes, 12 times 2 gives 24. Alright, now let's look at some division. So now we're saying... 4 is equal to x divided by 8. 4 is equal to which number? Divided by 8. We're going to do the same principle. We want to isolate the x. We want to get the x by itself. We're going to do the opposite operation of what was being performed on the x. We were dividing the x by 8. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So we need to multiply both sides by the 8. We're multiplying both sides by the 8. So we're going to end up with 32 on that side. These cancel themselves out. X is 32. Same principle. 
except that this time we're dividing, so the opposite is to multiply. We do the opposite to cancel out that um, constant to leave the variable by itself. We want to know what is this variable equal to. We want the variable by itself equal to something else. So 6 is equal to which number divided by 5? We are going to multiply both sides by 5. So the 5's cancel out here. 6 5's 30. So n is equal to 30. 9 is equal to which number divided by 3? Which number, when you take it and divide it up into three equal parts, you get 9 in each part? So we're going to multiply by 3 on both sides. 9 3s are 27. The 3s cancel out on the right. So 27 equal P or P is equal to 27. 7 is equal to which number divided by 5? Again, same principle. We're going to multiply both sides by 5. So that these fives cancel out, and we're left with only the x. 7 times 5, 35. Our final answer is 35. x is equal. And we can plug it back in. 7 is equal to 35 divided by 5. That is correct. So we know that we are correct. 6 is equal to which number divided by 8? Let's multiply both sides by 8. The 8's cancel out. 6 8's are 48. So 48 is equal to n or n is equal to 48. And if we plug back this 48 where n is, we see that 6 is equal to 48 divided by 8. Checking our answer, we see that we are correct. Alright, so we have a couple more to go. Same principle, which number divided by 10 is 4? So we're going to multiply both sides by 10. These 10s cancel out. X is equal to 40. W divided by 5 is 25. Multiply both sides by 5. The 5s cancel out. 25 times 5 is 125. Which number when you divide it by 11, you get 7. We need to get rid of the 11 from the left. We're going to multiply by 11, so the 11s cancel out. Multiply the right by 11 as well. So n is 7 times 11, which is 77. 77 divided by 11 gives 7. Which number, when you divide it by 5, you get 15? So we're multiplying by 5, so the 5's cancel out, and we need to multiply this by 5 as well. 5, 5 is 25, 5, 1 is 5, and 2 is 7. So y is equal to 75. Alright, same principle here, just that we have some, uh, some slightly bigger numbers, right? Which number, when you divide it by 8, you get 200? Multiply both sides by 8. These 8 cancel out. And 200 times 8, 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 2 is 16. 1,600. Just 2 to go. You know I love to give you lots of practice. I'm all for practice. Because that's how you're going to hone your skills and get sharper and sharper and sharper. Which number, when you divide by 20, you get 50? So we're multiplying both sides by 20. These 20s cancel out. 50 times 20. We're multiplying numbers with zeros, so we just put that many zeros at the end. 2, 5, 10. So that's 1,000. And finally, which number, when you divide it by 6, you get 24? So we're going to multiply both sides by 6. The 6's is cancel out. 24 times 6. 6, 4 is 24. 6, 2 is 12. And 2 
40. So that's 144 divided by 6 gives 24. All right, guys? So we had lots of practice, lots of practice. Very good. When you're a mathematician, you have to practice. You can't just do one or two and think that you got it. You have to try other ways, look at the different possibilities that can come, and see how you are going to manipulate those. Right? So always be open and, and willing to put in as much practice as you can. All right, my beloved scholars, thank you for joining me. If you have benefited from this video, just drop a line in the comments to say thank you, miss. And share the video with as many students as you can so that they can benefit as well. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And if you would like me to do videos on any particular topic, just let me know and I'll do that for you. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next video.